Hi, welcome to West Coast Stackers. In a world riddled with economic uncertainty and volatile investment options, there exists an enduring antidote, precious metals. Throughout history, these precious metals have stood strong against inflation, proving their resilience. Even today being ridiculed by some social media investors, precious metals are a store of value. If you buy the right stocks or real estate, invest in the right business, time the right cryptocurrency, you can profit from your investments. And with most of these investments, you also risk them going to zero value. This video will look into the true nature of inflation and uncover the remarkable power of silver. Does silver stack up against the dollar? Markets may crash, banks may fail, but precious metals will retain their value. I promise you, you'll never look at the dollar the same way again. Hang tight and we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. Today to understand, I mean really understand the true nature of precious metals, we have to look at inflation. Light without darkness, warmth without cold, precious metals without inflation, these are hard to understand unless they're contrasted. In 2016, I had my red pill moment, and any time I seen uh, the media or the news or the government mentioning any item, whether it's economy, money, or inflation, I had to do my own research. I had to verify what was said. And over the years, I transitioned from being a passive news consumer to a skeptical uh, observer. This skepticism led me to understand the true nature of inflation and opened the world of precious metals to me. Inflation is a game of misdirection. You're directed to look at the price of the goods instead of the fiat dollar in your hand. It's subterfuge, it's sleight of hand, it's look here and not there. Any information important to you as a person is spun by the media and politicians. They muddy it up, they obscure the truth and everything. Let's see if I'm just ranting uh, some conspiratorial stuff or if there's any merit. Take a look at how the government framed inflation back in 2021. I really doubt that we're going to see an inflationary cycle. Most economic analysts believe that it will have a temporary or transitory impact. The faster than expected increase in some of those prices is actually a good sign. The overwhelming consensus is going to pop up a little bit and then go back down. No one's talking about this great, great deal. This is something that will uh, settle down. Transitory. <laughs> Transitory. And the data shows that most of the price increases we've seen are were expected and are expected to be temporary. There's nobody suggesting there's unchecked inflation on the way. It's un highly unlikely that it's going to be long-term inflation that's going to get out of hand. I don't know anybody who's worried about inflation. Over the last couple of months, uh, we actually saw it trended downward. You may argue they didn't know. Uh, this has never happened before. There was never a pandemic. Economies never shut down. Supply chains across the world weren't stopped in their tracks. They had no way of knowing. This is the U.S. government. They have access to the best and the brightest. There's no limit to the resources to understand any problem. If the government takes action or no action, it is either deliberate or absolutely incompetent. And though I lean towards incompetence with this administration, there is basic economics 101. If you print trillions of dollars out of thin air, there will be inflation. If our, if our only exposure to uh, the economy is our 10-minute segment on the news, uh, we are ready for the Pied Piper to lead us anywhere. Listen to this uh, short segment from Jeffrey Tucker, who served as the editorial director for the American Institute of Economic Research from 2017 to 2021. This is a segment from Kitco News. Uh, central bankers have a funny uh, rule among themselves. It's like the fight club. The first rule of the fight club is that there is no fight club, right? So the first rule of central banking is that uh, inflation is not caused by excess money growth. I mean, they always deny it and they do it with a straight face, even though they all know otherwise. So the first rule of Fight Club is there is no Fight Club. And like uh, Mr. Tucker said, they know 
Economists know Jerome Powell knows that printing excessive money creates inflation. Janet Yellen knows that printing money creates excessive inflation.、Um, I was at a a place some years back where they hired a chaplain, and this happened. The chaplain we found out happened to be a false teacher. This was a, a Christian、uh, chapel. I came to find out that I believe there's. Uh, a certain range of people. Some people know and understand that this person was a false teacher. Some people may have understood that these teachings weren't correct, but they didn't think it mattered. And there was a segment of the church that may not have been capable of really understanding、uh, the theology enough to know whether it had merit or not. And so, in this situation with Uh, people in government, there there are those that absolutely know and understand that printing of money, raising gas prices,、uh, all create and add to inflation. There's a portion of them that know and don't care, and there is a portion of those in government that just don't have the mental ability to to understand even some basic、uh, economics. Now to money. Our U.S. dollars are considered fiat currency. I know many in the silver community are well aware of inflation and fiat currencies, but let's lay it out for the newcomer so they get an understanding of it. Fiat currency refers to a type of money that's issued by governments. It's not backed by any physical commodity such as gold or silver. It derives its value from the trust and confidence placed on it by the issuing government and its economy. Prior to 1971, I could go to the bank and exchange my U.S. dollars for gold. But today, fiat currency has value because our government declares it as legal tender, meaning it must be accepted as a form of payment within the country. Let's look at this Patty Hirsch video on the fiat dollar and his explanation. Pay attention to what he says at the very end. Happened in the United States whenever the government decided to take the gold standard away from the dollar, so it actually decoupled the value of a dollar from the value of gold. And then the government said, "This is worth a dollar's worth of goods and services backed by the United States government. So it's not really worth the paper that's written on. It's only worth what somebody else is prepared to give you in return for that dollar. That's really all it is." The bad news, of course, is that if the government prints lots and lots of those dollars, vast amounts of money goes into the system. It means you've got more dollars chasing fewer goods and services, and that can lead to inflation, where the value of your dollar is worth a lot less. And of course, that can also lead to hyperinflation. Where the value of your dollar just falls off a cliff because there's just so many dollars chasing so few goods and services, and when that happens, it could leave us very badly needing a drink. As Patty Hearst said in this video, at the towards the end, one of the challenges is that there's inflation or potential hyperinflation with fiat currency. Governments have not been honest with us about inflation actually existing, let alone the true nature of the fiat dollar itself. We've lost about 12% of the value of the dollar in the last three years. Remember, the dollar has been losing value for decades. The question I presented in the beginning of the video: How does silver stack up against the dollar? In 1965, the price of silver was a dollar 29 an ounce. If I bought 300 ounces of silver, that would have been 387 dollars. If I bought the same silver today, say I bought it at SD Bullion. Uh, 28.98 an ounce. That 300 ounces of silver would cost $8,694. Silver well outpaced inflation in the long term. Just like buying a CD or IRA, if、uh, if you buy high in the short term and you sell it in the short term, you're gonna lose. It's like cashing out a CD or IRA or a bond early. But if you buy silver on the dip in price and hold silver long term, it has been shown to increase in value. It's it's hard to to flip the switch in your mind to see that the silver or commodities or things are not increasing in price. It is the fiat currency that's losing value. We're born into the system. We assume that banks and dollars are all stable features.、Uh, I'm not saying it doesn't work. I could buy a house. I could buy a car. Or groceries. I can invest. But money, like time. Like fiat currency, it marches in one direction. Fiat currency tends to march to zero. The world is shrouded by politics and media manipulation. Truth lies buried beneath layers of deception and bias. 
It falls upon you and I to sift through the fire fragments of information, discern fact from fiction, and unveil the hidden reality. I'd like to say that I valiantly armed myself with the power of knowledge and reason, and I alone courageously embarked upon a quest to reveal the untold narratives, to bring clarity to the world veiled in obscurity. But I stumbled through this, I staggered through it upon my discovery just how deceitful the media and the government really were. Uh, the banks, the fiat currency, government debt, de-dollarization are all like a child's game of musical chairs. But when will the music stop? I don't know. Probably not this year, probably not next year. Is it in the next five or ten? How much value are we going to lose on our dollar in the meantime? But there, there are forces out there, um, de-dollarization that you and I must wrestle with to understand the outcome. When I was in college, I took some biblical hermeneutics classes, and a quote I've always remembered is a Rudyard Kipling quote from the poem, The Elephant Child. I keep six honest serving men. They taught me all I knew. Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who. Remember these six serving men. Whenever you consume media, including my own, question it. What, where, why, how, how come, is this true? Thank you so much for spending a portion of your day with us at West Coast Stackers. Look behind the curtain. Question the world. Remember, investing is a fundamental right we must protect. Thank you for being part of West Coast Stackers, and let's keep stacking.